videos, we got a pretty decent introduction to Scratch and some of the things you can do with it. And of course, I encourage you just to hunt around under these colored dots here and you can find all kinds of interesting things to do in Scratch. Let's focus this video a little bit on how you as the person watching the Scratch code can interact with the code. And the way, of course, you interact with code or even the computer is with the keyboard and the mouse. So let's maybe make, um, I don't know, maybe something that could be like a little bit of a video game. Let's see if we can get the cat to bounce around on the screen. And every time we're able to click the mouse with a mouse cursor, let's make it meow. Okay, that can be like a little video game for us. So let's see, how are we going to get the cat to move around? Well, hunting around in the motion blocks here, I noticed that there is this block called glide over one second to a random position. This is kind of an interesting block here. It allows you to get some motion going pretty easily. So if I just click on it, you see that over the course of a second, the cat just glides to some random portion on the screen, and they cleverly have the positions always so the cat stays uh, visible. Okay, And so what I can do then is suppose I wanted to make that into my core motion then. If I wanted to keep going, well, I go back to the control dot here, and you see I can either do it 10 times, but there's even a more interesting one called forever in here. So if I drag the forever block out, you can see what it does is just forever, which means unstopping, I guess, until the computer is turned off or the code is stopped, do what's in the mouth of the forever here. So what I'll do is I'll put this glide into the forever block. So if I click on it now, you can see that the cat just keeps moving because I've told the code forever, take a second to glide to some random position. And we could probably speed it up a little bit by changing this one here, maybe do a 0.1, make it go 10 times faster. So you can see the cat is really zipping all over the screen now. Might make it for an interesting video game. I'll slow down just a little bit more, maybe by putting a 0.5 in there. Okay, something like that. Okay, now here's what we'll do next. The video game then is in we're gonna have to try to catch the cat with, with our mouse cursor and see if we can click on the cat to make it meow. So I'll go back to events over here and I see this one right here that says when this sprite is clicked. So if I drag this over here, this is sort of a beginning block here. See, it has the curved top on it. That means it doesn't go after anything. It always starts things out. It says, hey, when the sprite is clicked, let's go back to sound over here and say, let's play the meow sound. Okay. And that's actually kind of all we need to do for the sake of this video game here is let's just stop and start it over again. We say when the sprite is click play meow so we'll see if I can catch the cat so I got to click on the cat to make it meow missed there I got it there missed again got it. see I'm getting there so it's actually kind of kind of hard so we could do that by slowing the cat down a little bit with one second here that I can get every time but you can see that uh, scratch diligently waits for the sprite to be clicked on in which case it'll play a meow sound and the reason why, let me stop for a minute here, the reason why I left this top block open is because I wanted to show you another way of starting your, your scratch here is because if I look under a control here, there's also a block that says when a key is pressed. And the key can be just about anything. You have up arrow, down arrow, see the whole alphabet's in there so we can wait for a key to be pressed. So let me drag this over here and I'll say, you can, I'll leave it a space, but maybe I'll go down and pick the G key because G means go. So when G is pressed, then I'll get the cat started and the video game will sort of begin. So it doesn't look like anything's happening right now, but of course it isn't because I haven't pressed the G key, but I'm going to press it now. Three, two, one, G key. And so see, hopefully you heard the click of the keyboard, and there the cat has started to move. And I'm trying to click on it now. And once in a while, I'm able to get the cat to meow by clicking on it. So just keep that in mind as you go through your scratch code. You don't always have to just passively sit back and watch. You can, you can work the viewer's interactions or actions into your code as well by waiting for things to be clicked when sprite is clicked or waiting for a particular key to be pressed. So as long as this is running and as long as I have a few more minutes left in this video here, let's maybe drag another one of these out and say, okay, when the M key is pressed, let me go down here to M, let's have the cat meow. the cat meow like that and so as it's running now I can I can click on the cat to make it meow but according to this block I can also touch the M key press the M key to make the cat meow so let me try it here comes an M press yep M press so the cat is able to meow a bit here if I can change the pitch of the cat a bit like that let's see what that does see it's a bit higher pitch now so there's all kinds of things you can do and maybe this is a lasting one here let me go to looks over here and I can say change the size to 
500%. So when I press the M key, the cat should get really large and then a high pitch should meow. So let me just run this. Here we go. Here comes the M key, three, two, one, M key. And there we go. So it did work. So keep that in mind as you go with your scratch coding. It is possible to interact with the person watching the scratch either via the mouse or the keyboard.